Mr. Jean-Marc is coming up again. Hello, Hello. Jean-Marc. Yes. All right. I can hear you perfectly. Can you hear me okay? I hear you perfectly. Yeah. All right. We, uh, I, I, I introduced yourself, uh, first of all, in French. And uh, this interview is bilingual, but mostly in English because... I was explaining previously, and we spoke a little bit about this. Uh, this is the first time I do an interview without having the question prepared ahead of time. And you accepted this invitation uh, to uh, really make yourself available, which is a, a rare uh, a privilege that you uh, provide to me. So I want to thank you very much for, for accepting this invitation. For those people who don't know you, How would you describe your work in terms of collaborations? We see an, an awful lot of uh, communication, collaboration, uh, internet systems that allow individuals and groups to meet together. And sometimes those who don't know about how this whole thing works, that's when you kick in. Uh, please, Jean-Marc, for those who don't know about yourself and your work, can you talk and introduce yourself, please? So, hello, uh, my name is Jean-Marc Phipps. I, I live in France. And uh, I, my, my whole um, professional and also uh, more than that uh, activity revolves around Uh, open source uh, or free software uh, because that's how I got uh, into the internet because I uh, in the 90s I was doing a PhD in a university lab and uh, what university labs had at the time and which didn't exist outside was that fascinating things which later on we would call the internet and uh, i thought that was great it was all running on unix systems and i switched from that to uh, linux which allowed me to use everything i learned on that topic uh, at home on my home computers i'm still using that And I decided, and I downloaded stuff, and that looked really interesting. And that's how I started being uh, an internet professional and then an IT professional, because in the beginning, it wasn't the same at all. I Internet was not taught to people who did IT studies, because it was, you know, it doesn't really exist. Uh, and... Uh, Uh, and it was all documented by downloading docs on, on the internet itself, which is what I was doing. And luckily I was underst I could understand English. So I did that. And that's how I got into IT and internet through open source software, which I could download for free, learn how to use. And most of the internet, the, the in the beginning was running on open source software and still does just that people don't realize because we all see the computer we have on our desk and not the servers which run often linux somewhere in some exactly. data center yes so that's uh yeah and then i worked in some uh serv it service companies And uh, after a while, I wanted to, uh, well, uh, now I, now I work, what do you say, uh, on my own. I have my own company and I decided to, uh, I found about uh, Tiki software, which helps build uh, elaborate websites. It's a big toolbox while I was working on the in the IT service of uh, the Council of Europe, and they had a lot of users with very different needs. And we thought that was a perfect toolbox for answering diverse needs. And that's what we are doing. And when I finished my period there, I decided I wanted to do that uh, on my own. And I do that since 2011. Here you go. And then, so I joined the, 
Tiki Software uh, uh, community, uh, which is a loose organization of people who contribute to that software. There is an association which you know, deals with the administrative things, but uh, everybody is welcome to contribute code, which I did, or uh, download it. But anyway, uh, anyone can download the software uh, by themselves without asking for anyone or paying anyone or yeah, but just they usually, well, a lot of them do and others decide that they, uh, their job is something else and they pay other people to do it for them, which is where I, which is what I, uh, which is where I earn money. Which is where, when, when you kick in, when, when, uh, you exactly. are helping yes. uh, uh, groups of, of uh, people needing your services. Thank you very much, uh, Jean-Marc, for this opening, because uh, we can see your logo a little bit, and uh, I invite people to go and visit this website, which is tiki.org. Thank you, uh, Jean-Marc, because uh, uh, I, I learned from you, and Yoga Partout is launching also the English version, satoshi.yoga. Uh, I, I learned about this this open source community and all the terminology through, uh, through, through tiki.org. Please, for those who don't really know about uh, many terms you've mentioned, open source, F-L-O-S-S, FLOSS, what is the importance of this community and what is unique about this way of thinking? I almost call it a philosophy, a fluss philosophy, only because it really allows individuals to group and communicate better. Jean-Marc Libs, member since many years now of Tiki.org. How would you describe to those who don't know about the FLOSS philosophy, what it's all about? Um, it's all about uh, sharing knowledge. So, um, Can you define has... knowledge and sharing? Because knowledge is, yes. is mm -hmm. you know, a lot of information out there. So it started with... Uh, a man called uh, Richard Stallman, who was uh, very frustrated because he couldn't get some printer to work on some, to connect to some computer. And he decided that he would take things into his own hands and that nobody else should have that same issue. And so he decided that he invented the concept of free software, free, uh, as in uh, not uh, free as in beer, but uh, as in freedom. And he defined uh, four rules which uh, a software needs to um, respect in order to be called free software. The, the, the first one, which is numbered zero because it's IT, uh, is the freedom to use it. The, the number one is the freedom of study how it works which means that you have to be provided access to the source code. And uh, the number two uh, is uh, the freedom of sharing the software to distribute the software which you got to anyone you like. And the number three is that you also are allowed to uh, share the software as you modified it so that your changes, your improvements, you are also allowed to share that. So the whole idea is about freedom for the end users. It's not really freedoms for the uh, coder. It's freedom for the end users, the freedom to have that software. And then that's all about freedom and that scares a lot of people. So uh, other people decided that uh, 
those software were really useful and spreading a lot and companies were not using them. And so they decided that they would call them uh, open source and explain to companies that they can benefit from, you know, downloading software for free and looking at the source and changing it and tuning it to their own needs if it doesn't do exactly what they want and they could benefit from that. But really the open source software uh, and the free softwares, it's the same software. It's just another way of looking at it, depending on who you are talking to. So that's why the whole thing is free and libre open source software floss. It's just a way of saying, okay, we, we are not trying to discuss uh, details. We are talking about the same software, but some are talking about them from the, some political, uh, making things better for everybody view and others are from, uh, this is going to, uh, save us a lot of money and all that. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much for the explanation. Uh, Jean-Marc Libs, uh, I mentioned in, in the beginning of our interview that you rarely accept to, uh, to, to talk about your work simply and only because you're very much in demand. And I want to thank you for having and helping Yoga Partout and also Satoshi Yoga with your time. Because um, uh, let's face it, there is, a, 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 there is a, a, a lack of system administrators such as, such as yourself and uh, prices go up and you've been so kind to help all these years and you're still helping all those years yoga partout and set and now satoshi yoga to become who we are and that's a lot uh, thanks a lot for this my my last questions before we we go because uh, i promise that this interview would not go on for too long is uh, your view of the future, because you mentioned that this free open source software is is not just uh, theoretic, theor in in theory running the internet. It is at the backbone of how the internet is structured. Jean-Marc Libs. Your view uh, in regards to Tiki.org and also about the Floss philosophy, where do you believe we will be as in, in terms of humanity communication with all those new tools? We hear about AI, we, heard, we, we hear about uh, uh, RSS feeds, we hear about uh, conflicts and, and bugs and in, in the world of the internet, where do you think we will be, let's say in 2030 in, or in 2025? Today we are in 2023 and it seems that the growth and the, the, the amount of knowledge in this field is exponentially exploding. Are you afraid of the future, Jean-Marc Libs, or how do you see it? Um, I, I, I'm not afraid. I'm, I'm, co I'm cautious. There are dangers, but uh, I feel there's a lot of people who uh, are aware of that. And so we uh, keep uh, adapting to uh, new uh, uh, progress which sometimes don't look like progress, but, but there are lots of discussions about that, which I'm aware of. So I'm not really frightened and because I'm, I can confirm that a lot of people are, are, are doing a lot of job to ensure that, you know, we don't get too much into some dystopian future, which is a risk, but so far I don't see too much uh, and I still see myself as working on Tiki because Tiki also keeps progressing. There's a lot of people using it and everybody who, you know, uh, improves it, 
because mostly the customers are people who say that, oh, that's something else we would need and it doesn't do it. And so they pay someone, myself or someone else to add it. And, and then we contribute it back to the community and everybody else has it. And that's how we progress organically and we answer more and more real life, you know, needs as opposed to having some, uh, marketing department trying to imagine what people will need in five years yeah, yeah. and get it right or wrong. We never know. You know, it's, <laughs> it's a totally different. So we are flexible. We adapt, uh, we improve. So I'm not, I'm not afraid. All right. All right. You're just cautious. Thank you very mm. much for your time. Uh, on the Satoshi uh, website, I will make sure that we also add the uh, interview that the first interview you gave me when I discovered what Tiki.org is all about, where you describe how important communication is and you make a difference between what the client, let's call, uh, let's call an apple an apple and an orange by an orange, the client, what the client wants versus what the client needs. And you're an expert at this. So thank you very much. And um, again, wishing you the best and looking forward perhaps for another meeting should everything go fine. The Satoshi Yoga in English and the French Yoga Partout uh, might just make another, uh, uh, might just have a, another brother or sister in that future too. So thank you. Have a good thank day. Thank you and you're, you're welcome.